Blair, Thomas, and Magic. Yeah. Subscribe now, watch us live lavish. Yeah. We got Brooks. Brooks. Now we live, live. and we bring it major vibes. Yeah. Obsidian Alliance. We're taking hey, all this is Magic here with the Obsidian Alliance. Alliance, and I'm with the Blair Thomas, as we'll be discussing Kenobi and Star Wars in general. Uh, Kenobi, of course, has been out for a month now on Disney Plus with all six episodes released. So me and Blair will be discussing, talking about Kenobi, Star Wars, Hayden Christensen, and plenty more. So first things for first things first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you could give Kenobi a score out of five, what would you give it? 3.7. Technical. Why? <laughs> um, it ain't a five. You could argue for a four. But it's not a one or a two. It's a little better than a three. So 3.7. Two and a half to three for me. Um, mainly because, and you can call me biased, I don't care. Um, one, I do not like the fact that they focused on Reva um, as a major plot point in the story. Um, I do not like that at all. Um, I don't. I don't like the fact that somehow she knew way more than Anakin on where Kenobi was. And <laughs> Kenobi has made sure, one, to be good at hiding away from Anakin and um, Palpatine. And two, Anakin's not dumb. And it, this is now, granted, this is young Anakin. So he is impulsive still. He is... um impulsive he's still things of that nature but he's never been dumb he's never been not using a strategy to get somewhere um and i don't like the fact that they focus on reva as a character not only that um well, hold on sir okay what do you mean focus on her like because i don't I, I know you saw like a little bit of her background but like how much from the outside looking in, how much do people really know? Probably not a lot about Reva. Um, but however, comma, the show, the show is called Obi-Wan Kenobi. That is what the show is about. The show is literally based on him nine years after Order 66. And we should have gotten a lot more that we did. This should be really, this should almost be Clone Wars heavy um, with flashbacks and because Kenobi, for all intents and purposes, suffered from PTSD, extreme PTSD, extremely PTSD. He lost Sabine in the Clone Wars to Maul course the whole thing with order 66 in general and fighting anakin like of course he's you know um what the heck owen in peru he has to stay away from luke like you have a whole story in itself right there and just having those type of moments and him having to learn excuse me how he becomes the old man hermit that we see in episode four or the old wise men that we saw um, Ezra get in contact with during Rebels and his final battle with Maul. So within itself, we don't have to really focus on Reva at all. Um, and then the whole Leia thing, because for those of you that didn't see Kenobi, at the end, he meets Leia one more time before he goes back to Tatooine. And doesn't, and for what all intents and purposes, doesn't do a mind wipe. So that almost, almost breaks canon. The only reason why I can argue against it is because of the simple fact of we know Leia 
after this moment pretty much starts to become a part of the a part of the rebellion a part of being part of the galactic rebellion and starting to learn about hierarchy and government and things of that nature so you could say that during this one blip in time for the next seven or so years that this means nothing even though for most people would make the argument this is a man that saved my life not only once but twice and they should have the impact well you could just also use the fact that it's childhood trauma a lot of people suppress memories that they don't want to remember maybe she somehow remembers ben later on down the line i mean it's not like that's going to be her only gunfight. She's probably in 10 or 12 more even before we see her in A New Hope. Well, yeah, or, no, that's why, that's why I can make that argument of she's going to go through so much before her being kidnapped. <laughs> so, so, you know. Um, but Qui-Gon Jinn does break canon. That, that, that does break canon. What do you mean? The, the Force Ghost coming to him to talk to him? Yes. But I thought that's how he learned how to become a Force Ghost. He was a disembodied voice until right before A New Hope in which he fully learns how to become a Force Ghost. So by the time he, at the time he meets Obi-Wan, he should still be a voice. He shouldn't be a fully embodied Force Ghost. So and then that, well, that we all, first of all, we all know Qui Gon was just he was a man before his time. So <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and chalk it up as Qui Gon being Qui Gon. You know, he's that man, the man of the hour. Um. So yeah, you know, um, I do appreciate the dialogue. I very much liked the dialogue between Darth and Obi Wan, and. The moment where his voice kept switching back and forth, more of Anakin receding into Vader or coming out for a little bit and then going back in. I like the con the inner conflict. That's always been a, a, a very good thing about Star Wars. You're always able to see the inner conflicts on the screen. You're able to see it and manifest it manifests physically. And the last time we saw that was Rebels. So yes. You know, it's, it's refreshing to see in live action. And, of course, it's always good to have uh, Anakin back, you know, doing his thing. And um, Official Anakin. No no shots at, um, no shots, of course, at James Earl Jones and or um, Anakin from the Clone Wars. I forget his actor name. Um, he does a great job with Anakin in the Clone Wars. But, of course, me and Blair are both millennials. <laughs> So we grew up with prequel Anakin, Aiden Christensen. And yeah, no, it's it's good to see it's good to see Hayden Christensen back. It's good to see Hayden Christensen being loved. Um, but then again, I think that's just because it's sad because we want Jake Lloyd to be back better, but we know he's never going to. Um our generation has touched so many, um, has done a lot of damage, but also has touched a lot of people into them coming back. Um, Hayden Christensen, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, we're still trying to get Padme back. <laughs> um, we're still trying to get her back too. Um, it's, we've sent our things out to Jake Lloyd because our generation is not the generation that put them into the ground. We were kids <laughs> and we love them. I, I, I think you can ask any millennial that's a Star Wars fan. I would be hard pressed to see them not put episode three in the top five, if not top three. <laughs> it's, it just honestly reinforces the idea, not the idea, the, it just confirms that you guys, like, this whole Anakin thing, 
the guy's been I'm sorry, he's he's been evil since he was a paddle one. <laughs> the way he was lightsaber dueling his own master, focusing on not the fight, but just victory, and even hearing him talk, like, how did John not see this? Like, his training would have stopped that day. That day, I'm like, look, we're gonna put a we're putting that we're gonna, we're gonna put a pin in this. We're coming back to this because I don't know if you were really trying to hurt me or not. It's not. It's kind of kind of a toss up from the outside looking in. That that kind of looked too legit. <laughs> looked a little too legit. Like uh, somebody's about to lose an arm or a leg. <laughs> you know. But um, I did enjoy that too. Um, seeing his growth and seeing how their growth together somehow connects their separation. Because even when it comes to tactics, they knew what the other was going to do before they even did it. Yeah. And I think that, and, and this is why I give it a two and a half to three, because that is what you should have shown you should have shown I hate for it to be oh yeah let's just make it a flashback series but all in all those were the those were the best parts of the series (laughs) Obi-Wan and Anakin having their interactions and mind you that was pre-Clone Wars I was Padawan Anakin (laughs) pre-Clone Wars Anakin we ain't never seen in live action, really, Padawan Anakin like that. Yeah, it went from child to Jedi Knight and then Sith. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. like, we didn't get, like, and that's why the comics are so good, because you get Padawan, um, you get Padawan Anakin. You get, like, as a child... The man beat Darth Maul. Simulation. <laughs> he beat a simulated Darth Maul in the same fight, of course, that killed Qui Gon and Obi Wan was able to do. But he was able to go against Maul, and that's Prime Maul. That's uh, that's Maul that almost that's Maul that still almost beat Ahsoka. Actually, pretty much did beat Ahsoka if it wasn't for him you know, messing up a little bit and Ahsoka was able to take advantage. So, I mean, what you heard what Ahsoka said, though, when they started like, you lucky Anakin didn't show, (laughs) because listen, homie. Yeah, no, no. Anakin would have gave him the business. All right, Anakin, yeah, Anakin would have gave him the business. Um, He was a, Savage Opress was able to get them because they didn't really know how to handle or deal with them. That was the first time them dealing with him. So, yeah. No. If that was a been a rematch, nah. Savage would have got it. Savage would have got handled easily. <laughs> um, and we already know Kenobi can beat Maul. That's 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 been done countless times. Um, but yeah, no, like that's why I can't give it no higher than a three. Because to me, it's just like, like you said, the flashback to Coruscant with Padawan Anakin the connection between Obi-Wan and Anakin, especially at the end to where you thought, I don't know if they, cause they kept doing, it's like almost like a Mandela effect. It's almost like you see the blue in Anakin's eyes when he's dealing with Ahsoka or Obi-Wan or people that he's actually close to or care about. They did it in the comics with Padme um, and things of that nature. And it's just like, those are some of the best moments because <sighs> Anakin is always just, I know it's doomed by canon, but you almost, it, you almost get into the story because you're just like, if you could just have a serious long ass conversation, Anakin can, Anakin might be dead, but Anakin can come back sooner than Luke. <laughs> it's just like how I feel about it is just like 
you know, you got the formula and you're showing us glimpses of what has been. But in reality, that could have been a series in itself, a functioning republic, because the republic had been functioning for a few hundred years at this point. Sith were thought to be extinct. What happened after that day, after Kawhi Gar got buried? What happened after that day? Did I'm sure there was there was more. What like let let's 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 revisit those things. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the battles. Hell, honestly, the Clone War saga could have had a, an entire movie strictly about the battles that the clones fought instead of doing bits and pieces. Could have done one where it was literally, you know, seeing the different Jedi that betrayed the order to just add on to the insult that everybody knew, but you know, whatever. Hmm. I mean, I, I give the clone wars its respects because it went on for six seasons and we got, we got a lot. <laughs> we got, we got a lot. We got Pong Krell who was pretty, Pong Krell was pretty much a dark Jedi. Like, <laughs> We got a lot of we got a lot of Jedi. We got a lot of clones and how they felt about the war. And some of them didn't agree with the war. Some of them were just like, bro, like, what are we doing? Some were just like, nah, we got to fight. We got to do this. Some were extremists. Like, so the Clone Wars did a lot. I'm still mad about season six. <laughs> I will for that'll be forever my argument of why Star I'm glad Star Wars is here but I'm not glad Star Wars is here cuz if because if Star Wars had the technology of now <laughs> and and the, and and everything of now I I I bet Star Wars would be good period because Star Wars is still a good story regardless Star Wars is one of the few stories that is actually able to tell the story of a man falling from grace and doing it well. It's just the fact of you had episodes four, five, and six, and then everything after that is just doomed by fucking canon. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. Darth Vader is going to become Darth... Because that's the thing. Why don't y'all do... Why don't y'all do Star Wars what if like you can do Marvel what if? <laughs> can you imagine what if Darth Vader never burned a Mustafar? <laughs> what if Obi-Wan would have died? What if Padme would have survived? What if Count Dooku wasn't killed? What if Boba uh Jango Fett was never murdered? What if Mace Windu killed the Sith Lord? Like that's what if seven us, what I just if, gave y'all seven episodes right there. <laughs> yeah. What if oh, what if Ahsoka never left? <laughs> what yeah. if Yoda didn't defeat his dark side on uh Dagobah? What if um what if Obi-Wan and Yoda switched? And <laughs> it's just like Oh, it's Yoda versus uh, Yoda versus Anakin and Palpatine versus Obi Wan. Yeah, Obi Wan ain't making it out. <laughs> I give him, I give him three minutes at best. I, I give him a little longer than that. Big, big. The only thing that the only thing that's gonna get Obi Wan is the Force. Because Palpatine is a Form 7 user. He's a better version of Maul. So, which is why when Maul and Oppress tried to fight him, he was dark walking both of them at the same time. <laughs> which, which, by the way, <laughs> nobody should ever disrespect Palpatine's lightsaber skills. He just don't use. Yeah, he just doesn't like to. He thinks he thinks they're <laughs> barbaric. Yeah. That don't mean try him. That's not what that means. That does not mean 
when it comes down to it, he will not slice you up like a a, 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 a Christmas cake. Like the only person that's able that was able to beat him is Mace. And or that's Yoda. only huh? Yoda. I wouldn't I they kind of they almost have the same type of fighting style. I mean, but if you think about it, if it was if it had stayed to the confines of that room, only reason why he got a brace is because he started throwing chairs at, at Yoda. Mind you, Yoda is still 900 years old, which is still way older than Palpatine. Palpatine is only, what, 100, 200 at best? But, nah. <laughs> I got seven, 700 years on you, bro. And that's it. First of all, you knew Yoda was on Demon Time because guess who was trying to jump out, out the room? Palpatine. And that's when Yoda was like, if so powerful you are, why leave? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know what time it is. You know what time it is. <laughs> I say in a lightsaber duel, Palpatine wins, but in a force battle, of course Yoda wins. Like, yeah, no, that's yeah. <laughs> the only man that I've seen being able to redirect lightning directly and pass it back to the man. Yeah, no. Like I'd say lightsaber lightsaber skills too. Cause it even even if what you're saying. Let's say Sidious is better. You could have solved all your problems. Why are you trying to leave? No, nah, we're going we're gonna to solve this right now. You take me out, all the rest of the Jedi, you already know they're scared of you. Come on. I want the smoke. Yoda said, I want smoke today. They, man, Yoda started banging on the desk like, boom, 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 boom. Who the hell is that? No, no. I just the only reason why I say, well, of course we know why he didn't win because his heart officially wasn't in it anymore towards the end. Um, he decided to be like failure, I am, hide, I must do, and all that bullshit. (laughs) You know, whatever. (laughs) But. But yeah, no, back coming back full circle, like that's it's almost like it's almost like sometimes you don't want to pull the trigger on these things because you don't, because for some reason you think you're gonna antagonize your new fan base. But the thing about it is your new fan base hasn't seen the depths of Star Wars as your old one has. Like, like I said, don't get me wrong, Obi-Wan is still okay. Am I gonna watch it again? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not I'm not gonna watch it again. I'm I'm okay with where it's at. Um, but this should have been this should have been the Obi-Wan show, not the Obi-Wan and Reva and Leia show. Like <laughs> you know what? Let me ask you something, sir. Okay. What's what's a show? What's an aspect besides what if? What would be something from Star Wars that you would like to see in live action, and why? Darth Vader comics. <laughs> that's one. Like that's it. Like the things that he does in the Darth Vader comics, I would love to see in live action or in a video game for that fucking matter. Um. <laughs> video game would actually be probably better because then we could actually see, we could actually play as Darth Vader, um, which is why Fallen Order is so good. Because when you face Darth Vader as pretty much, you, they say you a Jedi Knight, but you really ain't no Jedi Knight. You really just, you just an upgraded Padawan. That's how you are. Because Darth Vader was able to toss a master like it was nothing. <laughs> she charged at that man. He said, Bitch, get, out my face. Was... get out my face. <laughs> you would be wise to surrender. Yeah, probably. And <laughs> you decide to fight him anyway. <laughs> People. <laughs> I think, you know, I think, and you're probably going to, well, you're not going to wonder why because you'll know why. 
I want I want a general grievous series live action. No, because I can see that. He's one of your three he's one of your... did him no type of justice at all. We know where he got that wheezing from because he <laughs> ran into Mace with <laughs> too. Ran into him at the at the corner store. <laughs> talk talk talking junk. But I I think honestly it would be a good arc. It could be five or six episodes of uh his descent into Cor- uh to Coruscant to kidnap the Chancellor. And I know they did it in the cartoon, but I'd like to see what it would look like in live action because I want I want to see General Grievous put hands on Jedi. That's what I want. <laughs> I, I just I, I and I need it. I need it because people be disrespecting my boy. And I'm like, oh, all he does is command droids. No, that's not all he does at all. Like the man is a Jedi killer for a reason. I'm trying to tell you, man. Like <laughs> the only the only Jedi that weren't afraid of him were Obi Wan, Anakin, and Mace Windu and Yoda. That's um, it. Mace was cautious because he didn't want him to learn um Vapad. He didn't want him to learn Vapad because if he would have learned Vapad, it's donezo for the Jedi Order. It's done. He's killing everyone. <laughs> so, and this, mind you, Grievous, they say Grievous has the force, but not really. So a non-force sensitive person is able to, once again. Use the fighting styles of the Jedi and beat most of them. <clears throat> so, but yeah, no, Darth Vader, you got General Grievous. Honestly, I would love to see more Padme. Um, I would, I would love to see more Padme. Um, not only because, of course, we want Natalie Portman back into the Star Wars landscape, but and this is the problem because. The Clone Wars as a cartoon series was so great. But you don't put that same action in live action. And you have so many opportunities to do so. And it's just like. Like, you really can't top it. It's top tier cartoon. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> as far as develop, development, graphics, character development, the, the music, the scores, you, you got it all in one show. And it's yeah. just like. Just transfer it. Just just transfer it. <laughs> and I do appreciate Disney. I do appreciate you giving us glimpses into Order 66 because we never get to see the purge on the temple. We got to see it from a far wide angle, just a bunch of lightsabers going out. Like, no, I want I want to see what happens when Anakin hit the door with the 501st. I I want to see how it went down. And honestly. Yeah, I want to see him. I want to see him killing the younglings. I got a little bit of glimpse of that. I understand, but it's still just the flashes and the you know, ah, ah. no, like I want to see it. I want, I want to see the savagery that turns him into Darth Vader, because honestly, in my opinion, that entire time he slew Jedi. There's a reason why do not hesitate, show no mercy. When he got to the kids, he hesitated. He looked at them. I still, he still ignited his saber, but he took a minute. And he just really looked at him. He was like, yo, I'm really about to kill kids. Like, that's it. That's the point where it's just like. And, you saw, and we saw even in episode three. Um, when he killed all of those people, um, from the CIS and you have that beautiful shot of Anakin turning with the tear down his face with the full Sith eyes, every, cause, cause from the time he said, from the time he kills Mace and says, what have I done to that point? <sighs> Show no hesitation. Show no mercy. But that man, and it's once again, I still blame the Jedi. (laughs) Because, yes, what Anakin did was damn near irredeemable. 
<laughs> but even up until he's about to burn, he says, help me. To the one person that he looks to in Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan turns around and walks away. And I hate you and da 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 da. If you li- if you would just have a goddamn. It's funny because Obi-Wan says, of course, before they fight, only a Sith deals in absolutes. But by the end of the fight in Mustafar, it is Obi-Wan that deals in absolutes. And it doesn't take until pretty much Anakin's death. <laughs> that, o- that even Obi-Wan as a force goes says, you know what? Maybe he can be redeemed. And it's just, and that's and that's what makes Star Wars so great and so sad because it's just like Ahsoka thought he was just Ahsoka thought he was just a bad person until he called out to Ahsoka. And you and as Dave Filoni has confirmed that conversation before he says, then you will die. That was Anakin. That was not Darth Vader. That was pure Anakin in the Kenobi series where he's talking to Kenobi. That is Anakin. That is not Darth Vader fully. Like, which is why there's still conflict within him. Yeah. Like, that's what makes that's what makes Anakin Skywalker a beautifully flawed character. Because throughout his entire time, he is he is one of the most ruthless villains in fiction. From. Like even even the whole, you know, I am not your failure. You did not kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. It's just like, oh, I, I, I know I sent <laughs> that shit. I sent you that TikTok. I was on the floor, man. I was just like, oh, he's really gone now. Like, oh man. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, god damn it. Oh, God, that hurt. (laughs) That hurt because it's just like. (sighs) Because even though you know the entire story. These are the parts that you don't get. And it. It hurts and it sucks. (laughs) It's like, once again, this is. That that whole conversation is one of the best things in all of Star Wars from a conversation perspective. Like from a conversation perspective and a character thing, that is one of the best moments in all of Star Wars. I may have not liked the fight because the fight was bullshit. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give the fight its due merit. I don't because I don't fucking... You just got your strength, Obi Wan. Now he's able to pull a ray and lifting all these goddamn rocks. Fuck out of here! Um, kiss I mean, my we, ass. We know that Obi Wan was considered one of the weaker Force users in the um, in the Jedi Order. But hey, listen: if emotion can motivate everybody else in every other point of fiction, it can motivate the Force. So power of friendship, my it ain't the power. No, it ain't the power. That was the power of all right. I'm really getting sick and tired of you messing with me. You just threw me down a hole, tried to cover me with rocks. You know, the whole it, he had he had a Spider-Man homecoming moment where Spider-Man had to look into the puddle, saw half the mask, half his face, and he goes, Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. And yes, I hate it. It's cheesy, whatever. <laughs> But guess what, though? It happens in every single type of fiction. So we're going to stick to the formula, sir. That's what we got to do. We got to stick to the formula. How, in every movie, there's a moment. Who are you? Show them who you are. Black Panther, Superman, 
Batman, Teen Titans, Gotham, uh, The Joker, The Dark Knight, uh, Star Wars, uh, even anime. How many times do you have to hear, I know who you are. Show them who you are. I know who I am. Son Goku, call me Kakarot. Blah, blah, blah. You hear it all the time. So it is what it is, man. I apologize, people. That's my bias for Darth Vader. <laughs> it's all good because, you know, the thing about it is, I'll tell you, you know, the, the detail that I didn't like? What? I don't like the fact that the chick was like a spared, a spared Padawan, like you spared her and like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't. I, that's why I don't, I didn't like her character at all. Like I don't. And look at my face. I'm black. <laughs> I do. It's not. I don't like her. Not because she's black. That's or, or a black woman. That First whole crap is stupid. saying that to us. Y'all are just trolls. Shut up. I don't care if you like me or not. Don't unsubscribe. I don't care what you do. Because Star Wars is is versatile in more ways than one. And yes, I did enjoy seeing a uh, a black woman at the forefront with a red lightsaber. Had she been some just random Jedi. Then I would have had a problem because it's just like, so where were you? Where you been? How come there ain't nobody tell us about you? Hmm? I right. like the fact that she, the whole time she was plotting against Anakin. I like that, but it's just like, you're getting a little too bold, my friend. Like, did you really just try to sneak up behind Darth Vader with a lightsaber? Like he wasn't going to feel your intentions? Not like... even that. <laughs> That whole scene, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The fact that he turned off your lightsaber, broke it apart to get another one, and then threw the other one at you and told you to get back up. Like, what? <laughs> like, my man, like, my man was doing Ip Man Win Chung with the fourth. He was like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> my man didn't pull out his lightsaber once. He was like, hmm. <laughs> try again. <laughs> yeah, no, that scene. I do love the conversation that him and Palpatine had, though. I don't. I, I like it because you can see where the distrust in his, in his apprentice is beginning to unfold. It's just like, hmm. You seem uh, a little bit agitated about this whole uh, Obi Wan thing, you know. I'm the one who told you to leave it alone in the first place, but uh, you wasted my resources, a lot of my men. But hey, you know, you just seem a little bit troubled. He would not evade me again. Hmm. I wonder if your thoughts are clear on this. Perhaps your feelings for your old master are betraying you. And then I like the fact he just hangs up on that part. Like he just hangs up, and he's just like, oh, you know. I will always be loyal to you, my master. I think that's when Palpatine knew, like, huh? Yeah, you you gonna try it one day. You gonna try it. And I'm gonna be ready when you try it. Best believe I'm gonna be ready. My whole thing about that is just like it's literally right after he had half his mask <laughs> sliced off, and you trying to save face in front of Palpatine, like, bruh, like, no. What you like, mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you mean? Are you judging him for trying to make sure his master doesn't look at him like a weakling? You saw what happened to his last two apprentices, right? Man, I got time. <laughs> oh, so you don't respect Darth Vader for changing his mask and making sure he polishes up for his master, huh? Once again, this is my bias for Darth Vader. <laughs> I am speaking from a biased place. Because I do not like when they try to make Darth Vader look like a bitch. Oh, this is just me. <laughs> I mean, his robotics are designed to make him a bitch. Like, it's not designed that way. <laughs> what do you mean? The, he has a vulnerability is, to electricity. It's, a, it's designed for him to be able to pull in the dark side and his hatred. 
It does not make him a bitch. <laughs> My man took a damn lightsaber into the damn chest shit and did just fucking started. Man, don't let me start. Right, let me tell you something. <laughs> he doesn't, you, he, he has a, he has a vulnerability to electricity. So it's just like, you're saying he's not a bitch, but I mean, when it comes to his masters, it's like, hey, bro. I mean, he was specifically designed that way to be subservient. Like, this isn't, like, I'm not making this up. That's, that's what Sidious' plan was, like. Now listen to this mess. <laughs> <sighs> Like I said, this is speaking from the this is speaking from a bias point of view. So I'm not listening to this mess. <laughs> but anyways, um back to Kenobi, Star Wars, things of that nature. Um, like I said, I don't mind, like I said, I don't mind a black woman being an inquisitor. I don't. I actually think that's one that's actually a cool aspect of things. Um like I said, what I do mind is just that her character seems so, almost seems a lot more intelligent than everybody else in the show. That's a problem that I have. And like I said, the show was almost, it's almost, it's almost like Obi-Wan and Reva was like one and one, it's like one A and one B. And it's just like, no, like this is Obi-Wan's then not only that, here's the funny thing. Going back to the last episode, so now how many stormtroopers did it take to be able to take out Owen and Peru before they were burnt alive? <laughs> because Wait, how many stormtroopers? Say that again. So now the question is: how many stormtroopers did it take? before Owen and Peru got burnt alive in episode four because they were able to almost take on an Inquisitor with just guns. Like. <laughs> you said Owen and Peru. Yeah. Owen, Luke Skywalker's family, Tatooine. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Owen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um... I mean, hey, first of all, don't don't sit here and act like she didn't have a lightsaber through her two hours prior. She had I'm a just, hole in her stomach. I'm just saying. And, and, okay, so we just go act like Owen in Peru got force abilities? They may not have force ability, but a blicky is a blicky. <laughs> 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 Listen. <laughs> They pulled up with the stick. Let it hit. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, because Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, no, it's just. <sighs> like I said, Reva is just. Uh, you, I mean, I like I said, I like the fact that she's an inquisitor, but. I don't like the fact that they just made her a major component. I don't like the fact that Leia didn't get mind wiped and also was a major component of the show. The trauma will mind wipe her. Like, they should have just, they really just should have kept it to tap. Like, I don't like the fact that technically in the timeline, Force Inquisitus has been invaded and beat twice in a 10 year span <laughs> because it got beat by oh it got beat by Cal Kestis in Fallen Order and Obi-Wan single hand almost single handedly <laughs> went through it himself so <laughs> to get Leia so it was just like bro how incompetent are the inquisitors and the but then again wait that also could be the force having a plot because, you know, the Force is always a part of the plot. <laughs> Honestly, she probably should have died when um, 
Vader came to the outpost and was like, you were warned. <laughs> That's probably, I'm surprised you didn't take her out then. I'm surprised she still was alive after Anakin put a lightsaber through her chest. It was her stomach. It's a lightsaber. <laughs> Sir, listen. So let's not talk about who shouldn't shouldn't be alive. Anakin got all his limbs chopped off and he was six feet from lava. He should be dead. Palpatine made sure that man was alive with the force. Oh, shit. <laughs> But then again, we don't have no story if Anakin doesn't survive, so. <laughs> then you got Padme dying of a broken heart in the 51st century. Like, you know, I, I <laughs> no, I, I just, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, well, as you can see, it's always a fun time when we discuss Star Wars. Um <laughs> But that is pretty much our been our review of Kenobi. I know there's a there's because it's really honestly between three people. It's Kenobi, Reva, well, four people. Kenobi, Reva, Leia, and of course the man himself. Um once again, he gives it a 3.7. Still think that's an arbitrary number. Uh, <laughs> I give it a two and a half out of three. We both have our differences, but we can say. Oh, there is one more thing before we fully take this out. How do you feel about Star Wars going forward, especially with Hayden Christensen being reprised in Ahsoka? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, keep bringing the emotion out in these scenes. You guys are doing a wonderful job at that. Um, I like the consistency with the lightsabers and the action. We're getting a lot more and we should have been had more, but I'll, I'll take what I can get, you know, better late than never. Continue exploring the universe of the galaxy with these different creatures. Definitely am a fan of that. And uh, it was just a smart move. Disney doesn't play with the bag, sir. You know we don't play with the bag at Disney. That's one thing we don't play with. So they were going to do whatever it takes, sign whatever they need to sign, make whatever apologies and quiet that they need to make an apology for to get that man back. Because you're right, you can't have a successful Ahsoka story without having some flashback to Anakin. There's just no... There's, if you don't have no flashbacks to her being a power one, you failed. You failed. Yeah, like, in fact, we'll save that for next time. <laughs> How do our Ahsoka show wish list? How to be for next time? Um, but as far as Star Wars moving forward, I'm, I'm wary of Disney um, when it comes to the movies. <laughs> TV shows, y'all been doing okay. Um, the Mandalorian is great, even though season two was kind of... Eh. Um, You're just hard to please. That's what it is. I'm not hard to please. I just read it. I just read everything. So it's just like... I'm, it's Blame the versus community because I got to be over analytical. Sometimes, sometimes I... And that's, I think, sometimes that is my problem. Sometimes I cannot just turn my brain off and enjoy because every time we go to these movies and every time that we go to these things, I see it the next week on the damn Facebook forums and posts. Like, just like, for example, anytime, um, just quickly, it, like when the One Punch Man manga came out with that whole new chapter, the ne literally the next couple of hours for the next few days, all I saw was that whole damn manga panel and the manga chapter. And that's the thing. Like, sometimes I cannot sit back and enjoy because it's always how, how I have to interpret this to make sure that people have the correct context and don't try to overblow stuff. That's the whole thing. And I think that is somewhat my problem. Um, so I am somewhat over analytical. I'll, I'll take a fault in that. But... 
I think my main problem, and this will be the last thing I say, stop trying to paint the Star Wars universe as safe. Like the only time you're not safe is when you're dealing with Jedi, Sand People, Sith, and Bounty Hunters. The universe is a dangerous place. Even on places where there's no outposts, it's always been dangerous. And the and and the Mandalorian explored that a little bit, but I want I want that aspect more touched upon. Star Wars is not safe just because you're not in the Republic or you're not a part of the Sith or you're not on Tatooine. There are other planets where it's infinitely more dangerous, so we need to touch on those things. True. So Star Wars is. I'm wary of the movies, TV shows, but do it okay. <laughs> Um, I can't wait to see, look forward how it goes from here. Ahsoka is going to be the show that I pay the most attention to because Ahsoka, Anakin, Darth Vader is 1A and Ahsoka's 1B for me. Um, as far as my favorite characters in the entire landscape. So I didn't like the Rosario Dawson choice, but for what she was able to bring, it's okay. I'm sorry. I just love the original voice actor for Ahsoka. So that's just me. Um, Can we get... Are we allowed to get any type of shine, bro? (laughs) Can we get some shine? Do you mind? Do you mind? (laughs) Goodness gracious, man. We can't have nothing. Should have got somebody other than Rosario Dawson if you want to pick a black person. Anyways, (laughs) this has been the Blair Thomas. I am magic. And this is Vinny Obsidian Alliance and our Star Wars overall review and our review of Kenobi. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need guidance, as always, come seek the Alliance. Peace and have a good day.